I think in one of my, I did a couple of interviews with a kid from England a few year, weeks ago, three weeks ago, and last week I did one with a fellow from India. And I, I talked to, I think the Indian fellow about how sometimes, you know, I'll, when I'm interviewing people uh, for these uh, Dan Schneider video interviews, or when I'm just talking with people, these people are experts in something. And I'll ask a question. They'll, you know, we might be talking about some scientific or philosophical concept, and I'll ask a, a gut level base, you know, straightforward question. And they're like, "I never thought about that." Well, how could you not think about? It? But I, I, I do think about these things more, and so I try to bring some of that back from the future. Uh, bring some of that back. I, I talk about it in one of the plays. I think about how. Uh, there's a photo of me with my arm around a kid when we're five or six, and this kid was an average kid. And I, I remember asking him about, what do you think about President Nixon? This was when he was bombing the Vietnamese, because my dad was hated Nixon, and this kid had no idea who Nixon was. And But for me, at five or six, you know, Nixon was a bad guy, because my dad loathed uh, Richard Nixon. And so, you know, I would ask kids in the neighborhood, you know, what do you think about Nixon's policy about bombing the Vietnamese? And they'd be like, you know, drool running down their chin. You know, <laughs> I uh, I've only read for the double X the humanist part. Uh, you yeah. you say that uh, it's one of his better long poems. I'm just looking through it here. It's it seems like a 50 page poem just with the humanist. Is it uh, at almost epop length? It what length? Epop. Epop. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, epopee isn't defined by length. Epopee is defined by the, the genre, uh, by the, the hallmarks of epic poetry, that you have a certain hero, and the hero goes well, on a quest. I, I only mean traditionally in the sense that it's like, you know, you look at these Greek... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's so it, it's probably 80 to 100 pages total. The, the Inhumanist is maybe, what, 45, 50 or something, whatever it is. Uh, it's been years since I read it. Uh, you know, uh, it's it, some of the people who ask me these questions, they'll they'll pick out something I wrote in something about a play or a, a, a book that I read or wrote about 15 years ago that I, I read 30 years ago. And I, it's like, I don't remember the, the actual thing. I'll stick by what I said unless I'm proven wrong, but I can't, I, you know, uh, Jessica was asking me before about the, the, or was it you, the Gulag Archipelago you mentioned. Now, I can't, I can't tell you other than the, the overall thing that it's a, an excellently written book. And I've got the condensed version of it. Uh, Jessica's, I think, read the whole Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn, but so she would re remember scenes. I mean, if, I mean, I can remember scenes from that. If you brought them to me, I can remember the end of uh, Crime and Punishment. I can remember certain scenes from Moby Dick, uh, the smell of bread from A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. But, you know, I can't even remember, you know, half the things I write in these plays that are only three or four months uh, gone by. But that's the, that's the interesting thing is when I write these plays, uh, it's like I turn on the spigot and boom, you, you know, five or six different sources come to me, bam, and these ideas just knock against one another and find th their own poesy of parallax between them. And that's a good, that's a good term though, the poesy of parallax. Uh, um, and it, it just works for me. Um, it's one of those things that I know, this is why I know I can't teach anyone about that. It's something that I have. That's not to say that you couldn't use it or learn from it if you're reading the stuff. But, you know, a lot of these young kids that write me or someone like you or someone like Alex Sherriman or even Jessica to a certain degree, Jessica has her own way of doing things. I can't make her write greatly in my way. Just like uh, I, I could write, let's put, I could write more greatly and mirror Jessica more easily than she could me. And it's not because her stuff is more simple. It's more classical. Whereas with me, like I said, there's this mis mishmash of stuff, and I can I can make a Frankenstein's monster out of things that you wouldn't even think of putting together. Uh, you know, it's also interesting as you remember these books, how you remember very small things. Yeah. Um, uh, I talked to Don Moss a while ago, and he he reminded me of the scene in Moby Dick where they're cleaning the vessel uh -huh. uh, after they killed some of the whales, and uh, that poetic yeah. guy I think is very important. Uh, because it, it, I get the sense when I'm talking to Don Moss, I'm not just getting uh, the perspective of, of Melville, but I'm also getting the perspective of Don Moss and what he's taking out of the book. Yeah, well, I, the impact of things hit me more. When I, when, let's say if I, when I, for example, read Proust, 
or I read uh, Infinite Jest. Uh, right then and there, I could write about what it was. But like, other than being Quebec, tennis, and being a total piece of shit, I couldn't tell you anything really about Infinite Jest. It just washed over me. Proust has the famous scene with the with the the biscuit. It has uh, there's a scene I think where he's in jail. Uh, there's something with a desert. Uh, and you know, these are the, uh, Proust, as I, I said before, there's 300 great pages of writing and 3000 pages of shit, you know, Most so of them are from Swan's way. 